Testimony before Congress of Dr. Wagan's former boss, Brown and Williamson's chief executive officer, Thomas Sandifer. I believe that nicotine is not a dick. I believe Mr. Sandifer purged himself because I watched those testimonies very carefully. No, all of us did. And there was this whole line of people, whole line of CEOs up there all swearing. Part of the reason I'm here is that I felt that their representation. You asked me if we were sitting on something explosive. Well, we're not sitting on it. CBS corporate leaned on CBS News, which yanked an interview we did with a top-ranking tobacco scientist, corporate officer. They're trying to uh, close down the story. You mean uh, the 60 Minutes is letting CBS corporate decide what is or is not news? What's uh, Wallace think about this, or Hewitt? Or... How prominent, what kind of placement? Oh, come on, Lo. this is the New York Times. Uh, I don't know. Well, until you do, all I can tell you is what you already know. They will not air an interview. Call me back in ten. Hello? Debbie, it's me. Hi. What time is it? Oh, it's late. I'm sad, I know. When are you coming back? I can't get out of here till mid-morning. I'll be in tomorrow night. Listen, could you call a number for me? Mississippi. Okay, hold on a second. What is it? Hello? Lowell. All right, Lowell. Page one, editorial's interested. Let's talk. Here's how it works. You ask me questions, I tell you if you're wrong. Lowell, yeah. you sure you want to do this? Hey, it doesn't work. You burn your bridges, man. You ready? Okay. About this whistleblower. Did Mike and Don go along with the corporate decision? Lowell? Did I tell you you were wrong? No. Uh, I'm assuming the cave-in begins with the threat of litigation from Big Tobacco. Are we talking, uh... Are we talking Brown and Williamson here? No, I usually sit around my hotel room dressed like this at 5.30 in the morning. Sleepy look on my face. How many shows have we done? Huh? Come on. How oh, many? Oh, lots. <laughs> That's right. But in all that time, Mike, did you ever get off a plane, walk into a room, and find that a source for a story changed his mind? Lost his heart? Walked out on us, not one fucking time. You wanna know why? I see a rhetorical question on the horizon. I'm gonna tell you why. Because when I tell someone I'm gonna do something, I deliver. Oh, how fortunate I am to have Lowell Bergman's moral tutelage to point me down oh, a shining path to show please, me the way. Mike. Give me a break. Oh, you give me a break. I never left a source hung out to dry, ever. Abandoned, not till right fucking now. 
When I came on this job, I came with my word intact. I'm gonna leave with my word intact. Fuck the rules of the game. Hell, you're supposed to know me, Mike. What the hell did you expect? You expect me to lie down? Back off? What, get over it? In the real world, when you get to where I am, there are other considerations. Like what? Corporate responsibility? Well, are we talking celebrity here? I, I'm not talking celebrity, vanity, CBS. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about when you're near the end of your life in the beginning. And what do you, what do you think you think about then? The future? In, in the future, I'm going to do this, become that? What future? No. What you think is, how will I be regarded in the end? After I'm gone. Oh, along the way, I suppose I made some minor impact. I did an Iran Gate and an Ayatollah, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Saddam, Sadat, etc., etc. I showed them thieves in suits. I spent a lifetime building all that. But history only remembers most what you did last. And should that be fronting a segment? that allowed a tobacco giant to crash this network. Does it give someone at my time of life pause? Yeah. Mike. In my, you and I have been doing this together for 14 years. This is today's New York Times. In it is the whole sort of story of what went on inside our shop. And in the editorial, it accuses us of betraying the legacy of Edward R. Morrow.